Namaste and a warm welcome to Soft Talk. As you see, I have in my hands a couple of playing card sets. I'm no expert when it comes to playing cards, but today's presentation uh, revolves a bit around these cards. Uh, so I have them in my hands. Welcome to the show. Let me start the program now. The China card is gaining currency these days, it appears. You guys got a bit confused, I guess. Let me explain the thing. These days, a section of the Indian media that is going rabid, livid, that section is busy propagating this China card theory with a missionary zeal amid deepening border disputes with China and Nepal. Hawkish generals, equally hawkish politicians of all hues and colors, intelligence officials and defense analysts have, once again, started seeing China behind everything that happens in Nepal. On the contrary, we the Nepalese generally see India behind every development in Nepal, especially those developments that are not positive. This is because the southern neighbor has deep reaches in the corridors of power, enjoys what many analysts call special relations with the politicians of Nepal, the politicians of different hues and colors that seem to be representing Nepal and the neighbor's unparalleled ability to micromanage things here, things that have been proven time and time again. The fact that many of our politicians and politi policy makers have been defending Indian interests even at the cost of Nepal and the Nepalese makes things easier for the dear neighbor. The hawkish lot that I was talking about is shouting on top of their lungs through different Indian TV channels and through online and print media that China, our northern neighbor, is behind the Limpia Dhura dispute between Nepal and India. At this presentation, I would like to narrate a brief history of the Limpia Dura dispute. After suffering defeat in the India-China War of 1962, Indian troops retreated to the Nepali territory of Limpia Dura Lipulek region. With negligible presence of the Nepali state, they are making things easier for the Indians. Thanks to complicity on the part of the India-installed democratic regime in the 1950s, that regime seemed to be quite friendly towards Indian interests than that of Nepal. India managed to set up 18 Indo-Tibetan border police posts in northern, northern parts of Nepal. 18 Indo-Tibetan border police posts were established in northern parts of Nepal to keep a close watch on China. Ironically, the autocratic government of King Mahendra, formed under the Prime Ministership of Kirtani Ribista, managed to remove all but one post, and that post was in the Limpia Dura Lipulek Kalapani region of Nepal. That border post still remains there as a raw wound in the history of our ties with India, apart from swathes of other encroached upon territories like the Susta in the west and Pasipati Nagar in the east, among other parts. This is in addition to one third of the territories that Nepal lost after the Sugauli Treaty at the end of an unjust war with the British 
in East India Company in 1814 to 1816. To this date, encroachment of Nepali territories in the hills and in the southern plains continues unabated with backing from Indian security personnel. The reports come daily that encroachment has been going on in different parts of Nepal and this hurts us, this hurts the Nepali sentiments tremendously. Apparently, the Indians have refused to pull out of the Kalapani Limpu Lake Limpiadhura region as it offers them a vantage point from which they can keep a close watch on China, especially the soft underbelly of Tibet. The Tibet region is vital for South and Southeast Asia because major river systems like the Mekong, the Brahmaputra and the Indus originate from there. By occupying and gradually increasing security presence in the Lipu Lake Limpiadhura region, the Indians can easily keep in check any possible advancement from China towards their national capital via this route. Here we need no expert to assert that national security is far more important for both the neighboring giants than the windfall that the cross-border trade begins. It is way more important than movement of Indian pilgrims to Mansarabar and Kailas as well as that of Chinese nationals to different centers of faith in India. On hindsight, the Limpiadhura dispute also shows how myopic our political leadership has been, regardless of their autocratic or democratic credentials. Gradual stationing of our security personnel in the Limpiadhura region would have acted as a deterrent against any form of foreign aggression. The near absence of the Nepalese state in the region has only emboldened the aggressor, prompting it to build vital infrastructure like security camp and the road. Taking benefit from the absence of the Nepalese state in the region, China and India entered into an agreement in 2015 to engage in bilateral trade through the Lipu Lake Pass. Nepal objected to this move that once again undermined her sovereignty and territorial, territorial integrity, but the parties to the deal kept mum on such, a, such an important issue. Back to the China card. You see, our neighbors, we tend to lose when you guys war, when you guys go to war. Just like we lost our territory, the Limpiadhura region, when you guys went into a war in 1962 and when you decide to open new trade routes by blatantly undermining national sovereignty of a neighboring country. We are acutely aware that both of you undermine our interests, our national interests, our vital national interests. By agreeing, to, uh, by agreeing to engage in bilateral trade without our consent, without bothering to inform us and taking us into confidence. Apparently, we are in an unenviable position in South Central Asia, so it will be an anathema for us to play China card or India card or card of any other country for that matter. Anyway, Hastinapur, where the Pandavas and the Kauravas used to play great card games, is not located in Nepal. Of course, card games are a favorite pastime for many of the Nepalese. It is the same for the Chinese and the Indians, I guess. But these games do not have high stakes like national sovereignty, and territorial integrity.
Indeed, one of our folk songs advises one and all to not engage in gambling, not to engage in card games, pointing that the Pandavas lost their kingdom and had to take refuge in the wild because of gambling, because of card games. At the end of this program, if it's like possible, I'll try to just include that song to just enlighten and the audience about the follies about the like about why we should not engage in gambling uh, engage in card games like that stuff mere fact that we once in a while play card games using playing cards made in china does not mean we are playing the china card i don't know whether india manufactures playing cards or not but if india also starts manufacturing those cards will be all too happy to give the cards a try in the meantime you guys who are the giant among countries can of course play euro american russian or other cards to your liking because you have unparalleled expertise in such games of strategic importance it appears to us nevertheless i advise the giant neighbors of ours to play these games with caution for the stakes so seem too high even for you both on this note I wrap up this edition of Soft Talk. This centered on this episode focused on the so-called China card. Uh, please like, subscribe, and comment on my presentation. And please try to make the comments decent. And uh, let our discussions, let our discussions and engagements uh, generate more light than heat. Uh, let them not harm our relations with our neighbors and the world beyond so thank you for listening thank you for being a part of this journey i ask you all to just uh, uh, like this program uh, promote this program among your friends and acquaintances and family members so that i can witness an increase in the viewership that will be an added incentive for me to continue with this program. Thank you again.